and for an accident. Both Blacka and his passenger were rushed to the hospital. You'll recall Blacka was seriously injured when an accident caused the death of his friend and collaborator, Alton Black. Recuperation took almost a full year. He's getting ready for Sting now and is trying to make the best of it, but he is a bit apprehensive about the cars. Give thanks, Blacka. Damien Marley has been selected as the spokesperson for the Positively Reggae Sony project. Beginning January 17th, Damien will tour to promote his contribution. It's called School Controversy. The album features Shaggy, Raven, Shabba Ranks, Lieutenant Stitchy, and many others. A single featuring Tony Rebel is called Teach the Children, and on the flip side, Patra's Free the Youth will be shipped to sound system operators first. Remember Aja? They were a New York-based band made, made up of guys from Antigua, Dominica, and Jamaica. They came together in 1978 when Big Youth needed a backup group. They toured with the Mighty Diamonds, Max Romeo, and Living Truth. 1985, the group released Close to You, which became a New York hit. Nedic Adams, the frontman and rhythm guitarist, has been making the rounds with Steel Pulse and is now back on track with Dreadlock. That's this. It contains 11 tunes and here, and it's, it's just full of fun. It's good to see the revival of another New York band. Also on the return, I hear are Moja Naya and Nami and the crew. Uh, lots of luck to Nami, Moja Naya, and Adja. When Don Taylor's book is launched in New York, it will not be called Marley and Me. The international title will be called So Much Things to Say, My Life with Bob Marley. Do here in time for Marley's 50th birthday on February 6th, the Jamaican published diary has already sold to record figures. The cover of the book will also be revised. Bob will be on the front cover and Don Taylor will be on the back. Aini Kamozi has been added to the lineup of artists who will perform on December 1st at Madison Square Gardens. Lieutenant Stitchy was the only reggae man asked to the all R&B event. New names added include Colonel Abrams, Curtis Blow, Dougie Fresh, Christopher Williams, and Grace Jones. I hear Grace will be arriving on a white horse, but that's not been confirmed, so don't say I said so. Also returning for the anniversary is Frankie Crocker, who will MC the showcase the showcase <clears throat> is intended to be fantastic. Now, if the lineup seems like one that's going to last all night, don't count on it. There will be lots of medleys and groupings. Tony Rebel and Diana King are headed for the Bahamas for the World Music Festival on December 9th to the 11th. Nancy Wilson, Tremaine Hawkins, and Luther Vandross are also billed. This community service certificate was sent to Earl Chen last week by Congressman Ed Towns of Brooklyn. And it was given in recognition of his 15 years of service. The Roots man received letters of acknowledgement from the Consulate General of Jamaica, Vivian Scott of Epic Records, and Yvette Shore of Columbia Records. Congratulations again. But I just want to just read you a sample of the letter, of one of the letters. It says, congratulations on your 15th anniversary celebration. Where would reggae music be without you? I want to personally thank you for all your help in exposing reggae to Americans such as myself. On behalf of Shabba Ranks, Patra, Vicious, and the Epic Records family, we salute you. And this it says maximum respect from Vivian Scott. Michael Murray of the International Rastafari Advancement Seminary told me the commem commemoration coronation of Emperor Haile Selassie was a huge success. Awards, he said, were presented to dignitaries in the community, including Winston Rodney, who we all know as Burning Spear. Spear received the Haile Selassie's first Creative Arts Awards. And look who else attended them, the meritorious ceremony, Okua Nora and air personality Carl Anthony. I'll catch you on the inside. I'm Super Clive. I mean, I'm in New York. I watch Rockers, Urchin, Channel 25, cause it's good to go. Una.
couple of weeks ago, I was interviewed on America's Talking and the Roger Rose Show. It was quite an experience. Here's some choice excerpts of that interview with Roger Rose. Roger Rose. <laughs> Morgan Heritage, very nice. Great, guys. That kicks. And you will be back. We'll be talking a little later on. I haven't had so many people in the studio since my bar mitzvah. This is a thrill. Thank you very much for being here. Cool. Now, speaking of reggae, my next guest has talked to all the greats on his weekly television show, Rockers, and he even gave Bob Marley his last interview. And he's brought some of it with him here tonight. So let's welcome Earl Chin. Earl. Roger, how are you doing? Greetings. It's a pleasure to be in your company. Well, thank you, sir. <laughs> Please grab a chair. It's a pleasure. It is more my pleasure. pleasure. See, I wish I could. See, now I should greet people like that. When I, my next guest, it's, it's a pleasure to be in your company. Well, I get a certain amount of aesthetical vibes from being in your company. Oh! <laughs> oh. Well, wow. coincidentally, speaking about Morgan's heritage, are you aware that all of the members of, of, of brothers and sisters, not soul brothers and sisters, but real brothers and sisters. These are all, everybody's brothers? Every brothers and brothers and sisters. These are all siblings? All siblings. Everybody here? Yes. And where's mom and dad? A home like this? <laughs> mom and dad is right over there. <laughs> no way, Jose. Mom and dad are here? Yes. Oh, man, we got to bring them on yes. and say hello. Yes. Where, where are they? Oh, they're, oh, they're oh, yes. back over there. Oh, I guess, hi. Good to see you. Wow. That's Mr. Morgan right there. Wow. Well, we can't it's see him on camera. We'll see him a little okay, bit later okay, on. But it's a, uh, congratulations, man. You were mm. We'll talk about That's amazing. Right. Wow. So how do you feel about reggae? Well, see, that's one of my favorite kind of music. Right. The kind I can't speak tonight. I'm not excited. This, the, to me, that is, to me, one of the, the tops mm. in, in, in musical uh, styles. And it really is coming into its own now, isn't it? Oh, tremendously. That's taken a while, but it has been evolving over a period of years, you know. Right. I remember when the music just got started, it was really something more like an underground type of a music. Hmm. But, you know, like it has really grown tremendously. Well, you're the spokesman for reggae. I mean, how did that all get started? <laughs> well, I don't know really if I'm the spokesman for reggae. <laughs> well, but I've been involved in it for, for several years. Uh, when I just saw, uh, I've been in America for quite a long time. And when I graduated from college, instead of going to law school, I decided I wanted to be a disc jockey. Oh, well, there's your first mistake. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I started a, pro, uh, do a, a, a regular program on a station in New York called WNWK, uh -huh. late at night. And uh, the music was like very small audience. And uh, it has really evolved to a state where it's become a global entity right now. Yeah. You know? now, you, now, you met Bob Marley. Tell me about first meeting Bob Marley. Oh, well, I've met Bob Marley through his music before. I've personally be, be, developed a rapport with him. Mm -hmm. that, that report kind of originated or initiated probably about 1977. Well, he's like the, the Elvis of reggae. I mean, he's the king. Yeah, he is the king. king. And yeah. he will continue to be the king in my eyes. Well, tell me about meeting him, though. I mean, was oh, there well, like a story behind that? Yeah, that was really like a highlight of my career, really, mm -hmm. developing a rapport with Bob Marley. Right. Uh, as a result of me being on the radio, I used to get his music to play before it was released, like mm -hmm. get, a, get a special preview of it. And... Um, he really appreciated it, and we coincidentally born in the same sign. Mm -hmm. he's, Bob Marley's a February person. He's like a Joseph, you know, uh -huh. like a, an Aquarian, in other words. I, well, but I mean, is he, you know, from, from, we have a clip of here of you with Marley right here. Now, this, is, this was his last interview. Yeah, this was well, when he came to Madison Square Garden to work with the Commodores. Uh -huh. And right after this, this was, the, this was conducted like a couple hours before he went on stage. Really? He did two nights at the gardens, Friday nights and Saturday nights. 